glorious weather brought 80 riders from 12 countries to Gloucestershire for the 1995 Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Horse Trials. With over £120,000 of prize money at stake and teams to be picked for the European Championship in September and indeed the Olympics only 18 months away, riders had everything to play for. Indeed, the first prize, £22,500, more than double that of any other event. It is to the dressage phase we turn to pick the top contenders for this year's title. It is one of Britain's favourite competitors, Mary Thompson, we see first, riding her 1992 Mitsubishi badminton winner, King William. Looking fitter and leaner than ever before, he attracted great media attention and the explosive atmosphere really got to him. Mary's undoubted talent and her skill as a very good dressage rider was seen at its very best as he eventually settled down to perform what was regarded as a pretty reasonable test at 54.8 to finish in 21st place. But Mary Thompson had three possible contenders for this year's title. Only allowed to ride two, her second choice was the less experienced King Kong. Ten years old, but with a much better temperament and a horse that is indeed talented in all three phases. Second at Burley last year, this was undoubtedly his biggest test to date. But Mary's very good background to the sport means these days she can get the best out of any horse she rides. And although less experienced, he again really caught the grand jury's eye with a very accurate and well-performed test. 47 was his mark. He finished in fourth place after dressage. William Fox Pitt is another one with a pedigree that catches people's eye. Chark is a horse that hasn't always performed his best here at Badminton. But their build-up to the greatest individual competition in the world had been perfect. And he performed probably his best test ever when it really mattered. Scoring just 40.4 penalties, it meant that he had a lead of just over two marks at the end of the dressage phase but badminton attracts the very best from every corner of the world. And that of, must include Mark Todd, 34 years old and with two chances to repeat the title that he won in 1994. Justin Ace has never been the easiest in the dressage, but with help from Annabel Scrimmager, the horse over the winter months has certainly shown more improvement than we've seen before. Horse and rider working as one, showing some very good changes of pace. Six after dressage on a score of 49 meant he is close enough to win again. But his second chance would probably be regarded as his better one. This the horse that he bought from Nick Burton just less than a year ago. He impressed so greatly at Burley last autumn in 1994, only to be eliminated on the roads and tracks phase. The x race horse has a very good temperament and some superb paces, shown very effectively to finish on a score of 48 in fifth place. Mark Todd with two chances in the top six after the dressage phase. His odds would have to shorten. So from the double Olympic New Zealand champion to the reigning Olympic Australian champion. 30-year-old Matt Ryan with the 18-year-old Kyber TikTok. He looked younger than ever and looked an absolute picture. But it is, of course, the show jumping that is his weakest phase. So a good start in the dressage, essential if he is to win the title. Matt Ryan and Kyber TikTok have an outstanding understanding. Cool, calm, relaxed, 
He gave a really beautiful display of dressage to finish on 42.8, just two marks behind the leader, Chaka. 24-year-old Tina Gifford would be the baby of the possible contenders for this year's title. But she always saves her very best when it matters most. 1994 was when General Jock jumped into the headlines with Tina. They then went on, of course, to help secure the team gold medal in the World Games in The Hague. And this horse has been prepared for the Mitsubishi title very definitely in mind. Normally very consistent in all three phases, she did a lovely level test without hitting quite the high mark to take the lead to finish equal seventh after dressage on 50.2. Equal with Ian Stark and Calibre and Francis Hooper and Park Royal. Her second ride, Midnight Blue, although also 10 years old, is much less experienced. Very much in the same mould of General Jock, he has not always been the easiest to ride in the dressage. But Tina showed her enormous improvement in the dressage phase to get the best test out of this young horse that she's ever had before, to finish equal 11th, quite close enough, on a score of 51. That equal with Victoria Ladder and Chief from New Zealand. To show that the very best have come for this year's Mitsubishi title, our last contender is Bruce Davidson at Eagle Lion. He's been trying since 1974, when he won the first of his two world titles. He's been very close, including fourth in last year's competition. But dressage is the weak link of this horse's three phases, and a lot of work has been done in preparing him for this. The work was well repaid, because he went into third place after the dressage on 46.6. With two days of the dressage completed, the standard was seen as higher than we'd seen in recent years. And the first thing we notice is just how close the marks there. All the contenders just eight marks apart in the top five. In the top ten, there are also one or two that will definitely have a chance in the cross-country phase. Mark Todd with his second horse, Ian Stark, winner in 86 and 88, and also Victoria Latter on the very consistent chief, making up a very exciting leaderboard to go into the cross-country phase. Well, that day dawned bright and hot for a change. Before the riders set out on the roads and tracks, course designer and director of badminton, Hugh Thomas, gave us an idea of what to expect on this year's course. 30 fences and a distance of 6,973 metres, that to be completed in an optimum time of 12 minutes, 14 seconds. Well, this year, the course starts out in front of the house, having reversed it from last year, as we normally do. And what I'm trying to do on the course as a whole is encourage as many people as possible to take on the direct routes, to really have a crack and ride with controlled aggression. I think it's particularly important that they pay attention to some of the more familiar features here. We've got a lot of new fences, but uh, there's a danger always that they underestimate the old ones just because they've jumped them before. There is a completely new complex at fences three, four and five going out of the park where we've got the sunken road, which I've used before, but this time I've put some big log piles before and after it in an attempt to give the horses and riders something to think about, but something over which they can maintain flow and impetus early on. The battle will really be joined down at fence six, which is the Mitsubishi M. Two corners on the left-hand side by the white flag. They're not in a completely straight line, and riders have got to decide whether to jump them at a slightly odd angle or whether to make a slight curve in between. Alternatively, they can go by the red flag three jumping efforts with a big corner next to the tree in the middle. Coming on round the course after the traditional Luckington Lane and out into Cape Farm over Centre Walk, we come to the second Luckington Lane crossing. The bank has been there for very many years, but this time I've got a narrow arrowhead, only a metre wide across its face, to jump off the road. The distance across the road should be right for one stride, as long as the riders kick firmly off the bank, but it will be very tempting to have a run out here. 
The interesting point about this combination is that now penalty zones have been abolished, we're able to allow horses and riders to circle in between the two elements if they wish, which is intended to give those taking the alternative over the wings by the flags a much smoother ride if they want to opt for it. Fences through the vicarage fields are very similar to two years ago, with the exception of the Willow Hedge, a straightforward fence, but beautifully crafted by Robert Yates of Brampton Willows, and I hope it'll be a permanent growing feature on the course here for many years to come. At the famous Badminton Lake, I've been fairly traditional with the fence going in on the direct route, very big logs, which I've certainly learned at Badminton are essential for horses to focus on and jump well, with so much potentially to distract them with the crowds and the flags and everything going on. Then a short right-handed turn up the step and over the boat. Jumps beautifully if you land in the water well. On the alternative route this year, I've tried to pose a similar but easier problem that simply takes more time. Two, again, big rails, but on a one-stride distance with the drop into water, and the added significance that if you go that way in, you can't turn quickly enough to jump the short way out. And then up the hill to the quarry, a ski jump type of fence with the big logs at the top of a steep slope, and then a sharp left-handed turn over the Douglas fir logs in the bottom. All about control, when a horse shouldn't be tired, but will be beginning to feel the effects of, at this stage, something just under 6,000 metres. Here there is a much easier alternative, which is in fact nearly 100 metres longer when I measured it with my wheel, so it will take quite a lot of extra time. At Huntsman's Hangovers, I've built two fences, three strides apart. The tree in front of the first one makes it a little bit difficult to get at them, and the horses and riders have still got to have a bit of impulsion, a bit of impetus to jump these two fences close together when they're probably tiring if they've gone quickly. So the going firm could even be hard, uh, not quite as flat as I would ideally have liked because of getting the roller on, but the old turf at Badminton luckily does take almost anything. I should think it'll be very fast. Before tackling the cross country, the riders have to cover in total 15,510 metres of roads and tracks. That's in a time of just over an hour and 10 minutes, most of which is taken at the trot. Phase A, the first roads and tracks, is to get warmed up for the steeplechase phase. Here it's 3,105 metres to be done at three quarters race pace. Here if you go too fast, you waste energy. If you go too slow, you incur 0.8 of a time penalty over the optimum time of 4 minutes 30. A real test of judgment. After the speed test of the steeplechase phase, it's back onto the second roads and tracks phase, phase C. Here the rider must settle the horse back down to normal again, getting his breath and heart back, before returning to the 10 minute compulsory halt box. Here, with the temperatures well over 30, the horses have to be cooled down as much as possible. This will give an opportunity for much of the research work from the Animal Health Trust to be put into practice before those Atlanta Olympics where it'll be hotter and more humid in July of 1996. Mark Tard, the first we see with Justin Ace. He won it from the very front last year. This horse always promised so much but has never quite made it. I wonder whether this year will be his chance. Vast crowds enjoying glorious sunshine, and they really have got a treat in store, I think. As the first man out on course on the actual cross-country phase is Andrew Nicholson, spinning rhombus. Very experienced combination through the sunken road. A good introduction to this course. There's a lot of jumping to do in the first half mile and Nigel Taylor we pick up now with nick of time coming to the big stick pile a maximum fence but with big timber it really looks quite inviting as the second fence two water complexes Andrew Nicholson with spinning rhombus coming to the first of those quite straightforward just a little hesitant spinning rhombus now no youngster doesn't look quite as fluent as he has on some occasions. Doesn't really look to be enjoying himself. Coming to the Vicarage V. That's a very big fence. Goes the most direct route there. A 
Nigel Taylor with the horse that he went very well on at Punchestown last year. Owned by Mr. Iona Smith at the Mitsubishi M. Just corrects an adjustment in the middle of those, but otherwise jumps those two corners well. Well, this is the Luckington Road crossing for the second time, and this thought to be perhaps one of the key fences. Oh, and he slips. It's quite hard underneath, and the grass a little bit lush, so he immediately goes for the alternative. It's a longer alternative, but the straight route here, a real gamble, and I don't know that too many are going to take it. Certainly Todd hasn't to start with. Well, Andrew Nicholson still clear the with spinning rhombus. The Beaufort they staircase haven't looked as happily 21. across country as they have in the past. Coming to the Beaufort staircase. It's very close to the first and then misjudges the last. It's a long way up those steps. You have to be right spot on at the first and Andrew wasn't. And I think with the horse not perhaps giving or feeling of his best, he calls it a day. Karen Dixon, two chances. Hot property and two smart, two of her younger brigade. Get smart, probably watching on the box. Nigel Taylor at the two big hedges across centre walk. Nick of time, neatly through both of the centre walk fences at nine and ten. Mark Todd coming down to the lake, and this is always influential. Again, a big crowd as usual, hoping for thrills and spills. I doubt it will see it from this man. Going the direct route, bouncing, quite quick approach, but immediately the pace is taken off as he jumps the bounce and gets out to the shortest way out. Very economical there. And this horse looks a real athlete across the country. Hot property has been a bit lucky with, unlucky with Curran. He's uh, done quite well at three-star level. Ah! Doesn't get a good stride of that zigzag. It's always proved an influential fence over the years, and it could be again. Car and unseated. That's a very unusual sight. Well, Todd now three-quarters of the way round with Justin Ace. One thinks back two years when the horse fell here after a brilliant round. Different fence then. He must have been on for going into the lead and had that dramatic fall, but this time through the quarry, foot perfect. The crowd really relishing the entertainment there. Todd half a mile from home. Oh, and he gets a life. I think that probably has given the horse a nasty shake of his confidence. The fences now aren't too difficult on the way home. The two new Huntsman's hangovers, quite dark in there, but again, they're on the whole, quite forgiving. And although the horse doesn't look as full as running, it really looks to have knocked the stuffing out of him. I think he'll get home. Nigel Taylor, not going the optimum time. He needs to be here at about 7.55, and he's way behind the clock, but he is still clear. Gets a very good shot up and gives us a good demonstration up the staircase. As we see Tina Gifford on Midnight Blue, this will be a, a big test for Tina because this horse has never seen anything like big jumping horse. But these days, a big jumping horse has got to be agile in the modern well, sport. And I would think Tina would be well pleased through that first complex. That will give her a good confidence early on. As we now get a chance to see how fast the course is riding. Mark Todd, just an ace at the last. He looked to have had the stuffing knocked out of him at the cross question. Doesn't look as fresh as perhaps he has done. And in fact, he's not going to make the time. No, he's going to get a few time penalties. Indeed, 4.8, 4.8, finishing on 53.8. Midnight Blue at the Luckington Crossing. Going to take the acute angle. The pictures don't show the acute angle across there. Have to be really accurate. Now, a very consistent combination around badminton. Andrew Harris, Bally Cotton. Doesn't get the best of shots to the ends, but gets out of it well. Now Lucy Jennings, former young rider champion of Great Britain, Diamond Peddler, a horse that represented Great Britain in young rider teams to medals on two occasions. 
They were clear at Burley last year, but this will be a bigger test. Midnight Blue has looked perfect so far. Well ridden through there. Going to take the longer route, sensible piece of riding, not bustling this horse. And this year, with no penalty zones, the rules changed in January of this year, and these two fences numbered differently, Tina can circle without incurring penalties. New rule, and that was a planned exercise. Andrew Harris coming to the water for the first time. This horse, Ballycotton, five or six times round here, every time gives it his best. And everybody looks to be opting for the direct route. It's a very big fence, wide, yawning ditch underneath it, but they're jumping it very well indeed off this ground. Well, Tina Gibbons less than half a mile from home on Midnight Blue, and she has given this horse a most brilliant ride. The horse has never lacked confidence, and that has definitely been enthused by Tina's riding. And I would think the time is going to be pretty good as well. Still clear. And how this young lady has come on into international recognition in the last couple of years. Very, very good news for British team hopes. Now to the last. Looks quite good on the clock. Riding out, she's not quite going to make it. But a very, very good performance. And now one of the local hopes lives down at Bath, not uh, 10 miles away, with Come Alive. Robert Mickle, a good start. Over the second one. Lucy Jennings to the lake, and she's going to show us the longer route here. A stride between these two rails, but already would be five, six seconds behind the clock, but undoubtedly a route with less risk. Having a fight with the steering. But at the moment, not incurred penalty. She can, in fact, circle there, still not include. Those fences numbered differently. So that is quite legal. Certainly Hugh Thomas, course designer there, giving the riders the benefit of the doubt. Ballycotton, well through that now. Looking quite good on the clock. As we see Magic Grove, Gary Parsonage, they had their first badminton together here last year. And that zigzag is being quite an influential fence already, but not for Magic Rogue. Come alive now, 13 years old, an Irish bred horse. It's been a very good horse to, to Robert. It's seen him round Burley, was also in the European Young Riders Championship back in 1990. But Robert riding him very sensibly, not going for any big strides, sensibly ridden. Well, Lucy Jennings looked to putting up her best performance ever, coming through the two hangover fences. Diamond Peddler, still clear, but way down on the clock. He's going to end up with 20, 30 time penalties, if not a few more. But I don't think that'll worry Lucy, she's not had a lot of luck in the last year or two and this would be her best performance to date. David Bartman special. Come Alive stands right off the first step and Robert makes a very sensible decision to play safe here. The clock ticking away, but that's again, good piece of judgment from this boy. Gary Parsonage has looked a very sound rider for a number of years, and one would hope that this is the horse that will do his talents justice. But no one taking the gamble. I think a lot of people think that that Luckington Crossing, if they happen to go straight, is too risky. And so they're wasting a few seconds, five or six, I would think, and going the alternative, as we saw Gary do there. Robert Mickelbrand, come alive. Come alive, still pulling. Horses making going. Jumps way down the 
drop into the quarry. And now, once again, because of those numbered fences and no penalty zones, he circles. So he's through the quarry under the new rules without any penalties at all. Still clear. Now another local rider, William Mifflin, with Pasadena. Another horse that's taken this young man through young rider level and has done very well here at Badminton. He wouldn't be the biggest, but he's got a heart as big as a lion, this little horse. Real family involvement for the Mifflins. Now at the Sigma Hollow Gary Parsonage. Oh, and a lovely little stride there. Just showing how athletic horses have got to be. Good piece of riding, giving the horse time, too. Pasadena coming to the Vicarage Pond, 11th here in 1992. Oh, William sits tight there, nudges the top, but they stay together. Well, now we look back at some of the action with some of the other competitors earlier in the day. Andrea Morris from Lancashire with Monk's Buster sadly comes to grief at the water. Three refusers at the lake eliminates her there. Erica Watson had two good rides for this year's badminton, but Romanoff did not get her off to the best start as she had two stops at the zigzag, proving influential again, and she retired. Daryl Scaife was one of several first-time riders at badminton. He'd had one refusal at the Mitsubishi M, two stops at the zigzag, and he too retired. Elise Clancy at her second badminton was the first to take on the direct route at the second Luckington Crossing. Sadly, it didn't work out for her. That was her only mistake on the course. Emma Douglas Miller in her first badminton ride had had a, a chancy first half. Her luck ran out as she got a major ducking at the lake. She went on and completed the course. The former working hunter champion with David Bartram has got a very consistent record at badminton, completing in 92 and 94. But the enthusiasm ran out at the Vicarage V and they retired. Brinley Powell and Flying Tackle were one of the only British clear rounds across country last year. That was not to be in 1995. A nasty fall at the Vicarage V and they retire. The one entry for Canada was Robert Lemieux riding the Patriot. An unconvincing approach down the right-hand side of the Mitsubishi M means he runs out at the middle element. Captain David Foster is the most experienced of Irish riders, having completed 98 three-day events. He completes the badminton cross-country this time with just the one refusal at the lake. We rejoin the action now with William Mifflin Pasadena. Still going well, looking good on the clock. The big keeper's brush. Despite being 16-1, he makes light of that big brush. And this is Magic Rogue, Gary Parsonage. They're making steady progress. They're behind the clock. Pasadena. But the horse looked to be well within himself. Well, this is Eddie Stiver riding the New Zealand bred um tier horse. His wife has ridden successfully. Very good horse across country, and it'll need to be because he finished in 72nd place after dressage on a score of 76. But this horse is quite capable of going up a lot of places. This time last year, Eddie Stiver was nursing a broken leg. So. He hasn't ridden at Babington for a couple of years. He knows his way round, but he'll be looking for a clear round. William Mifflin, he's now within half a mile of home, less in fact. That lovely setting of the two Huntsman hangover fences made to look very easy by Pasadena. Now, with this good cross-country horse, I wonder whether he goes straight. No, he's another to play safe. I think the riders have definitely made the decision that uh, it Up is too here, chancy uh, there. Now well, now the fences. youngest rider in this year's competition, Nick Campbell with Nietzsche. He was 
placed in the Young Riders European Championship at Blenheim last year fifth, uh, in fifth place. And the Bovis staircase. This is the Sigma Hollow. Umpty really showing the experience there, as it's Mr. Tiger we see now. First time combination from the north, from Northumberland. Pupils of Ian Stark. Ooh, run out of forward momentum there. And the horse really helped her out. Charlotte showing her inexperience, but the horse helping her. Well, Nick Campbell and Nietzsche have been working pupils of uh, Mark Todd for a couple of years. And this young rider rides very much in the Kiwis mould, I feel. Eddie Stipper still clear as they come to the quarry. About five seconds difference. We've made it if they go all the way around, as Eddie has done there. And this is still a pretty fast time. And the horse looking full of running. Well, now Ian Stark and Calibre. A horse that he showed good form at Burley on last year. Not perhaps in the mould of some of his great horses. Remember, he won in 86 and 88 with the great Sawadi. But uh, this will be interesting. Nick Campbell not overawed by this occasion whatsoever. There's nowhere else in the world you get big crowds like this, but this man keeping cool. They're away and going downhill towards the first. Charlotte Nicholl and Mr. Tiger. Loses seconds but stays clean. Well now Ian Stark on Calibre. Big horse this. Coming to the Mitsubishi M. Ian anchors him, gets a good stride to it. Oh, and he takes a stride out. Ian goes to the buckle. A little bit in the style of the great Murphy. Well, this boy has ridden a really good round. Young man, but he's certainly ridden well, as so has Charlotte Nicholl. Her first baton recovered from that early nervousness, I would suggest, at the M, and has gone clear. Now, Ian will want to anchor Calibre. He won't want the same problem as we saw at the end here. Oh, the horse does it again. I would think Murphy's been telling him tales. Goes from the hollow and out of the last element on the one stride. Down to the water. Make rails at 18. Well, amazingly enough, this horse goes very much in the Flying Scots way. But they're going... <laughs> The best possible way, they're still clear, and the time looks good at the moment at the halfway point. They needed to be at the lake in 6.54, and they're pretty well on that target. The familiar green of Mary Thompson. Three horses entered, so she's riding King Kong first. Three horses entered, only ride two, of course, but she's coming halfway through the draw. Didn't go early, which is to her advantage. As the next on the start line for New Zealand, Victoria, that and Chief, probably being one of the most consistent partnerships there's been in the world over recent years. They've got a great badminton record, but have never won it. Could this be their chance? Well, Caliber's taken a risk or two, but it's very much in the style that Ian is used to. And it's very good to see this man back with a horse that worthy of his talents. Just a nine-year-old. And beginning to look just a shade tired, perhaps. Caliber, not a clean-bred horse, but uh, still looks to have uh, enough petrol left, I would think. Because Ian hasn't hung about. No one inside the time at the moment. Still looking for that first one, which is significant with the going as fast as it is, but this could be our first. Quick check on that watch, and I think he'll think that's good news. Well, King Kong looked a very good prospect for Mary at Burley last year when they finished second. Looked very mature through there. And the good news is that Ian Starr did get home. He's the first one inside the time, so he goes into the lead on Calibre. 
Well, Mary won't know that on King Kong, but she's making the best of her way so far. Chief of the corners. He's been a bit cheeky at them in the past, but he's gone very well through there, and Vicky will be delighted to have those out of the way. Well, now the lake for King Kong. Comes in quite quickly. Oh, and Mary loses her reins and just loses her way for a moment, and that fraction of a moment is enough to lose her impulsion and have 20 penalties. Disappointing, but just showing perhaps a lack of experience there for King Kong. Landed very low in the water, took the reins from Mary, and that was just a little too much for her to get that control. So 20 penalties at the lake for King Kong. Well, this is the young Australian, Philip Dutton, 30 years old, True Blue Girdwood. Bought for a song off the race course, but Philip Dutton to me looks another Bill Rolcoft in the making. Well, there aren't too many corners on this course for Chief, and if uh, Vicky Latter could well now have a best chance that she's had of any time to try and get close to winning this title, they would surely deserve it if they could. And the horse, despite his years, looks to be in fine form. King Kong at the last, just that one mistake at the lake, it'll cost her dear. But it's still a useful performance, and I think Mary certainly beginning to develop a very good team. Certainly two horses that look of international class, King Kong being one of them. True Blue Girdwood, very good little tough cross-country horse. They first represented Australia in the World Games. One unlucky refusal put them out of high honours there. He campaigns from the United States of America despite being an Australian. And he looks a good prospect to me. Everyone thought this coffin looked a very big fence, but it's jumped far better than people thought, and Chief 2 makes it look easy. And now Vina Buller, former Vina Lanz, one of top Irish show jumpers with Nocturne. They represented Ireland as individual in the World Games. Quite lucky through there, but it's clear that's what matters. The staircase for the young Australian. They look to be going very well, as indeed do this combination. But they are down on the clock, and I'm surprised. Chief is not as young as he was, but uh, he looks well. He has actually had a... A little bit of a setback in his preparation, and that's perhaps why Vicky is being way. Uh, quite easy on him. He's a very sympathetic for her horses, Vicky. But another very good performance, two thirds away round. Big, good looking Irish horse, this. Stands right off the bank. Thought for a moment she was going to go straight, but another one to opt for the longer route. No problems to Chief. But good control there, nice piece of sympathetic riding. This is Chief at the last. Vicky Ladder and Chief, she's going to have a few time penalties. She hasn't got any jumping penalties, and that'll please her, because it was a refusal that put her out last year. 15.666, her score at the end of cross-country day. Won't be good enough for the lead, but she'll be pretty handy. Katie Parker now, Cornish Fair. This homebred. Katie Parker, who went very well at Blenheim to finish 11th last year, and so takes on badminton with this horse for the first time. Her mother, of course, was in the gold medal Olympic team back in 1972, and Katie herself has been in uh, Britain's junior and young rider European team. Now got a very nice team of young horses, with this the most experienced of them. Up the other side. Not very right big, that, uh, but got a good car. jump in it. Well, True Blue Goodwood being stable in England since the World Games in The Hague, and indeed Philip Dutton being commuting backwards and forwards between the United States and Great Britain, and they look to have got the preparation absolutely right. This looks to be going easily inside the time, and if that's the case, they go on their dressage score of 56.2, and they'll be very close to the leaders. Well through there, 
And this is going to be a pair to be hearing more of in the future. Vina Buller, Nocturin, Vina's father-in-law, Bill Buller, one of the great campaigners from Ireland a few years back. And they're going well. Now to the cross question. Vina not going to go inside the time, but she's gone very well indeed. The Irish beginning to put together a, a stronger team as they've had for several, several years. And this is a real jumping combination. Vina putting all her show jumping skills to the best advantage across country. And they've been impressive, this pair. As away goes, Tanya Cleverly and Watkins, another seasoned campaigner here at Babington. Third, several years back, been very unlucky in some situations. A horse that was uh, a death's door with a twisted gut, got that right and has come back. Well, this is Cornish Fair coming to the Vicarage V, and she's going to go straight. Big fence for this little horse. Oh, and hesitates and nearly pays the penalty. A good recovery. And that's definitely courage seen there. Well, one of the fascinating things about riding cross-country at Badminton is if you have a nasty moment, and that might shake the horse's confidence, with these big fences, there's not a let-up, and it'll be very interesting to see whether Cornish Fair has been in any way put off by that uh, hesitation at the, at the V, and not doesn't look like it. Watkins, second Luckington Lane, and uh, like everyone else, takes the longer route. Combination that have promised so much, but just so often get the one mistake that keep them out of the big honours. Looking back down the course, this is Cornish Fair, Katie Parker, and they've gone clear. They're going to have about 20 time faults, I would think. So Watkins at the Sigma Hollow. Jumps in well. Ah! And Tanya almost unseated in the ditch at the bottom, loses the impulsion and gets 20 penalties again. And their chances, I'm afraid, blown. Going over the hollow, got under the rails, and just... Very difficult once you've had a mistake when you dream of winning this great Mitsubishi title. But uh, Tanya's got to pull herself together as she comes to the lake. She put... Ah! Oh, she fell in it in a big way last year, but this year, I think they seem to remember, and uh, I get the impression they're going to retire. Well, they weren't the only ones to suffer disappointment as we look back at some of the earlier action. Vicky Brake in De Brista put in a good round with just the rather unlucky one refusal coming out of the Vicarage V, having decided to go the long route. Menadieu and Joe Marsmith, normally a good combination across country, stumbled their way out of the sunken road and unshipped Joe Marsmith. Ghost Town and Caroline Sizer were trying to make amends for their great disappointment in The Hague, the World Games. They ran out of steering coming out of the lake and incurred 20 penalties for that. The Bullet and Justine Ryder had some very good form leading to badminton, but nothing went right for them and three refusals meant they were eliminated. Party Man and Emily Thompson, another young rider combination, having their first badminton. They'd had some earlier mishaps, but eventually their fall at the little badminton drop was their undoing. 53-year-old David McGonagall with Mr Crisp were trying to fulfil a lifelong ambition by riding here. That dream sadly came to an end in the ditch at the zigzag. <laughs> Part-time nanny Victoria Sinnott and Stax fulfilled their dream by completing a clear round here last year. Sadly, that wasn't to be this year when their problem started the Mitsubishi M. Further problems later and then a fall, but they did complete again. Joe Chipperfield had incurred problems at the Mitsubishi M, but even going the long route, they were one of the few to stop in the first Luckington crossing. Natasha Wheeler was another to complete her first badminton in 1994. She did have problems again this year, but once again they did complete. Jumping penalty is 72 times 
back with the action. And we join it with Summer Song, a nine-year-old English bred, but of course under the French flag with Marie Christine Drouard. Very big vole jumping horse. This is such an exciting horse on the world scene. Look at that. And that's why everyone's talking about this horse. Now coming to the Mitsubishi M. Almost jumps out of Mary Christine's hands there, but beautifully controlled. Well, now it's 24-year-old Alexandra Morley from uh, Daventry in Northamptonshire with double trouble. A horse that again completed here last year. And when you get one badminton under your belt, you can ride with a lot more confidence. And I think they'll see that from this combination. Well, now Summer Song coming to the second Luckington crossing. And I wonder whether Mary Christine will dare. Oh, big jump on. One strike. Oh, easy peasy. And that's just how it should be. The first one to do it. Double trouble with Alexandra Morley coming to the Mitsubishi M. Nearly everyone has gone down the left-hand side by the white flags. It's jumped well, caused the odd problem, but on the whole, it has jumped well. Summer Song takes out a stride and looks to be getting very strong. And Mary Christina will want to anchor that strength here because she could be in trouble if Summer Song is as strong here. Such an athlete, just like a cat. Brilliant. You won't see that jump much better today. Well, that's English breeding that people will be proud of. Yes, it's Caroline Brown now from the Midlands, from the Menel Hunting Country. Went very well here two years ago. A horse that had a year off through a little bit of leg trouble. Jump well enough through there. Over the left-hand side. Well, the riders thought this was going to cause a lot more problems than it has. It really has jumped well. It's a very big rail in, steep banks. But another one to make it look easy. This combination of uh, showing very good form in the show jumping ring. And they look very happy now. As we pick up the one combination from Belgium, the easy edition, Kurt Hendricks. They too experienced the World Games in The Hague last year. Irish bred horse, well, probably the biggest horse in the competition. Summer Song at the quarry, still clear and pretty fast. Needs to be at the quarry at 9.49. I just wonder whether she's quick enough. And there again, just looking a little strong has looked in total control of the situation. Won't incur any penalties, remember, no penalty zones. Those fences numbered such that those crossing the tracks have no penalties and still full of running. Mary Christine coming home. She doesn't look to be quite gonna make that optimum time, but this still a horse that I think we shall hear so much more of out of a Welton mare, Welton Gazelle, by Fleetwater Opposition, bred by Mrs. Johnson. British breeding is best, but now in French hands. And this is going to be a very good round indeed. It's going to incur just 6.8 time penalties, no more, and go right into the reckoning. Well, we said this is uh, one of the biggest horses, nearly 18 hands. Ooh, and 18 hands are not big horse, and he just walked through that hedge. Kurt Hendricks going a very sensible pace. This horse would be short of pace. And Kurt going a sensible pace, 22 years old. Big jumping horse, and that'll give uh, Kurt confidence. If he just goes his own pace, I'm sure he'll jump his first clear round for Belgium for many, many years here at Badminton. And Alexandra Morley, she's fulfilling the sort of promise she showed last year. Had a good round last year without quite going clear, but this time looks to be going even better. Well, Caroline Brown, her second attempt looks as good as her first attempt at badminton. Very confident combination. 
very neat and tidy. Caroline at the moment without a young horse. Paddy's image not in his flush of youth, but uh, certainly doing her proud. Christopher Hannibal, Mr. Bootsy. Impressive Irish bred horse, this. Takes a bit of a chance there, but there hedges, so uh, gets away with it. Kurt Hendricks coming to the little badminton drop. Goes down the biggest drop. Not everybody's taken that route. Three ways there, and it's been equally divided which way they've gone. Well, Chris Hannibal had 80.8 in the dressage. Didn't uh, impress the judges, but this would be their strongest phase. The Hannibal family, such supporters of the equestrian world in general. Well, now probably Ireland's strongest hope. Eric Smiley, he's had a long wait in the box with Enterprise, but he's ridden in the last two major championships, the Olympic Games in Barcelona and in The Hague, put up a tremendous performance, and he's right there after the dressage, 55.4, Ireland expects. Well, if Ireland expects, certainly Australia expects of the Olympic champion. Matt Ryan, he may be 18 years old, but he's a horse that's not done a lot of work in his years. So I think you can probably forget that. Matt, with his very distinctive style, he does ride this horse so well. And he means business. Chris Hannibal again. Now, he takes the middle route of that little badminton drop. They've gone well, this pair. Eric Smiley, who comes from Northern Ireland, across the Luckington Lane, the shortest possible route. I think Eric will go all the shortest possible routes. They know each other well, this pair, as William Fox Pitt again won to wait in the box. A long hold-up for Charka, and that may not help this horse's temperament. I just wonder whether the sunshine will actually bring out the very best in this horse, because certainly William will be trying. Away they go. The leaders both out on the course. Here's the second place after dressage. So this is when everything begins to happen. A little bit of spruce comes out of that second entry hedge. No penalties for that, as a vast crowd here really now getting the very best of entertainments. This is Enterprise for Ireland. Eric Smiley very quickly in. But this little horse is so capable. Oh, nearly misses his joke. Whoa. You have to say the Lord was with him then. Walks over it as we're here, and that will incur no penalties. He's still clear. Chaka now coming to the first combination. It's a very good start of the cross-country course big fences those but Hugh Thomas placed them very well that horse and rider really begin to work as one Chark has done that well this man has got such a very good temperament he too has come up through the juniors and young riders he really does want a horse worthy of his talents and let's see whether Chark will do it today safely over the first part of the M and the second one wondered whether he was looking for a way out but William certainly made it absolutely certain where he was going. Well, Matt Ryan and uh, Kyber TikTok almost look now as if they're out for a leisurely hack, but believe me, they are very, very smooth, very deceptive, I might add, too. I think their pace looks very quick. And this is Enterprise coming to the last now. This has been a good round. It's all Arlen wanted. It's not going to be quite inside the time. We've only got three or four now inside the time. This won't be another, but he won't incur many time faults. Well, William Fox pick can't, if he wants to maintain his overnight lead, not only has he got a jump clear, but he's got to go inside the time because uh, although Matt Ryan is out on the course, there's already enough in the clubhouse, as it were, Ian Stark and uh, Philip Dutton, that he knows he's got a motor on. A quick eye on the clock already. And by our reckoning, he's certainly up on the clock at the moment. The first water. And water hasn't always been something he likes here at Badminton. Strong 
me, Rip. This is where William is so positive, so good. Ah, oh, he sees his stride a long way out here. Now, that really was brilliant. Well, the vast crowd, I think one of the biggest crowds ever, still here. Matt Ryan at the Sigma Hollow. Oh, 18 years old and as agile as ever. That was quite outstanding. Well, that piece of agility from Kyber TikTok was pretty special. They certainly look on song as they come to the lake. Just slips to the buckle those reins, but still has got that control. Very happy partnership at work here. Out onto the second half of the course. Barry Thomason, young man from America, riding Chase the Moon for the very last time. An English-bred horse, but the horse has been sold. So Barry really trying to uh, have a bit of a dream ride, really. Wouldn't be very experienced. But well enough through there. Well, this zigzag has proved influential yet again. Several combinations have uh, disappeared there, but not Barry Thomason. He's been well briefed by Captain Mark Phillips, the American team manager. As we now head out to the quarry, and Matt Ryan, beautifully down through the quarry, lands so light down on the bank, turns, and that is quicker than anyone through there. Shortest route, giving him the quickest time through the quarry. Chase the Moon, still rather ambling along, coming to the second Luckington crossing. Doesn't get a good ride under the bank, long ride, and he goes straight! Well, people might regret not going that way, because certainly two out of three have jumped it and have jumped it well. Chakra of the Lake, crucial moment for the badminton title this year. And it may be the Mitsubishi title could be going Chaka to this man. Well He's really getting the best out of Chaka. He won Burley, remember, last year. A Burley badminton double has never, ever been done. But this man's going to fight him all the way. Matt Ryan at the last. He's much the fastest of the day so far with Kyber TikTok. 18 or not, this is some 20. 25 seconds could be inside the time and looks to have done it easily. Well, we're beginning to get more and more inside the time. It's getting a bit cooler. It might just be the better time of the day performances now. As Chaka goes to the little badminton drop. And William Fox Pitt won't know Kyber TikTok is home. Well, Australia having a good day. Can David Green maintain that form? He won so very well in Samuel last week on his other horse, Chatsby. And Chaka still looks full of running. Certainly looks set to have enough pace left to finish. And I think his time is going to be all right. It's going to be nip and tuck. He's got about uh, a minute to get home from here. And Chaka's ears still pricked. He's still enjoying it. And that is the significant part of this performance. William has nursed this horse. He's given him the confidence. David Green and Duncan. Duncan being an unlucky horse for David. One might, one might remember in Barcelona when he looked to have done such a good job, only to pull up lame, having knocked himself. David would love to get a good performance out of this horse that he deserves, getting towards the end of his career. Chaka at the last. It's going to be very close. Going to be very, very close indeed to that optimum time. Five, four, and he's going to be a second or two over. Yes, one second over, 0.4 of a time penalty. And so it's just 0.4 to add to his overnight score. He maintains his lead, but he's now a little less than he was before ahead of Kyber TikTok. Well, we really are seeing some very good performances. Barry Thomason riding out of his skin. Chase the moon. He's gone well in America at Fair Hill, but this is something far bigger and greater than that. David Green, Australia, Sigma Hollow. Oh, he's loose, and he's loose, and he gets popped out of the saddle, just like a pee out of a pod. And that'll be very disappointing, because David won't really sort of know what happened then. Horse didn't do very much, and you'd have to say David was unseated rider there, I'm afraid. Well, now, the first of two strong American challenges to come. They finished 11th in the World Games. Karen O'Connor on the very big Irish bred horse, Pico. 
good looking prospect and a good clear iron could put them right in the money and we learn sadly that David Green has had a second fall and has retired so look back now at uh, one or two of the other incidents on the cross-country course. Sally Clark from New Zealand, Squirrel Hill, they represented New Zealand in The Hague. They had a stop at the water. That was their only problem in the cross-country phase. The lake, which proved to be the most influential fence on the cross-country, also caught Dag Albert with the only refusal he had on his round with nice and easy. Owen Moore, taking the ride on no comment, looked full of confidence, set out very quickly indeed. They sadly buckled on landing over the Willows fence and took a heavy fall, had a second fall, broke his collarbone and was eliminated. Jo Ransom worked so hard to get to her first go, badminton go. and the sadly it ended too at the lake. The lake fence but has a refusal coming into it. The most local competitor all was Tony Pellet and Tom Tom. Great clear round last year, but disappointed started early for him as he ran out at the Mitsubishi M. He too had more trouble later. Polly Lyon, the former Young Rider European champion, got unseated at the first. It normally catches someone. Sadly, Polly Lyon was this year's victim. Albert Casadari was the one rider from Italy riding Nevada. In all, he had four stops. We see him with the one at the Vicarage V. Well over the Francis Hooper and Park Royal had a tremendous round, but we see the one mistake that cost them dear. In otherwise, a very good performance throughout badminton. The Goodwin family's Sydney's king dreams came to an end at the lake. The talents of Leslie Law unable to get the horse into the water. News now of Biko, the big Irish bred horse, Karen O'Connor. They had a very good dressage, just 51 penalties, right in touch. A horse that jumped into prominence at The Hague. He's a big horse, very light on his feet, though very agile. Owned by Mr and Mrs Richard Thompson from the United States of America. Great supporters of Karen. Neat across there for a big horse can cope with the big fences but what is impressive is how neat he is now too smart the horse that gave Karen such a very good year last year and of course also with her other horse get smart he not at badminton this year so her main hopes with this horse that uh, one gap come third at Burley one punches down that was only as an eight-year-old very speedy little number well very much in contrast to too smart Pico very Neat little type, too smart, but this enormous. How would he cope with a coffin? Well, for a big horse. David O'Connor, Karen's husband, won the big American Karen Championship through the event just last weekend. Down to the lake. He's watching, and he must be pleased. Very well well ridden through the there. Side. Well over the Mitsubishi pickups, and this looks a good round, and she's up with the clock at halfway. Two smarts. Karen O'Connor and Biko at the down to the lake. Bouncing very neatly. Luckington Water. And she's already had a refusal. She's already had a refusal at the Mitsubishi M, so that's going to put her out of so contention, but not Karen O'Connor. She's still very much there. Very well up those steps. Very quick. And Karen O'Connor is right on target. She needed to be at that Beaufort staircase in about 7.55, just under eight minutes, and she is. In fact, it's only just gone eight minutes now. And this horse looking full of running. In fact, Karen O'Connor just beginning to have a bit of a trouble to hold him. Nigel Taylor into his second ride, probably his best horse, the horse that was brought out by his wife, owned by... The great fox hunting man from America, Ben Hardaway. Nigel's father in law. And this horse, interestingly enough, by Galoubet, the great show jumping stallion of France. Interesting breeding. And a good prospect for the talents of Nigel. 
And our Karen O'Connor really has blossomed the, in the last two or three years. She's been in the world. The oh, and he jumps all the way to the bottom. And Karen does well to sit there, picks up the reins. And that was a good recovery. I would think people would be looking into what sticky stuff she uses there. She really is now well, world class. We're going to hear a lot more of Karen. She's going to test the best of them. She could hear this year. Karen O'Connor coming for home as out goes Bruce Davidson, Eagle Lion. They had at one stage in The Hague the world title for the third time in their grips, only to be lost at the water there. What can he do today? He's close enough after the dressage. Remember, he sets out in third place. Well, Nigel Taylor not breaking any speed records as yet on the Frenchman. Looks to me if he's going for a clear round. He knows only too well that if he could jump two good clear rounds, he'd perhaps get into contention for the British team. He's been on the edge for a year or two, and this could be his year to break through. He now really rides with his head. He's probably the tallest man in the British squad. He's well over six foot. Oh, he really attacks that, takes a bit of a chance. A little bit lucky there, a bit rash perhaps going in. But the horse really helped him out. Well, Karen will be very disappointed at her run out. It was a run out of a corner, and she sensibly perhaps realizes that she ran out left handed at the Mitsubishi M. Doesn't want to do the same again. So, wastes a few seconds to avoid yet another penalty. In the home straight, the big Pico, Karen O'Connor. And this looks like another inside the optimum time. We're counting them up now. That, I think, makes uh, seven, maybe eight. 12 minutes, 14 seconds is what we're looking for. Well, Bruce Davidson won't be thinking of that yet. He'll be looking to settle the horse down, get a confident start. One of several very good horses out of the Irish bred mare, Stream Lion. And this is a real jump for this horse. Bruce Davidson, who a month or so ago, six weeks ago, in fact, won the Pan American title, the gold medal individually there. But he's never, ever won here. Look at that. This is looking very good indeed. Gets right into the air. Nigel Taylor, Huntsman's hangover. Two clear rounds are possible for him. Now he's beginning to up the pace a bit. He certainly is not going to get home inside the time. In fact, it's already over the optimum time. Time penalty is now ticking away for Nigel. Chris Davidson swinging a little wide at the uh, water here. But this horse, a very fast horse indeed. Out of the same mare, as we said, as Pirate Lion, that won him the individual bronze in the World Games in Stockholm in 1990. Into rather like William Fox Pitt there. He saw that a mile out. Erica Watson, disappointment with her first ride. Romanoff, now with Last of the Incas, a horse that went very well here last year for Rachel Chaddox. She's retired. She was clear here last year, this mare. Now it's Bruce Davidson, the water. Very fast, remember the Hague. That's where he came to grief. Whoa, very quick indeed. Drives, oh, misses his step out. And they have a lucky moment there. They're not the first of the day to do so, but they quickly recover over those Mitsubishi pickups. And that certainly was a life for Bruce Davidson. On course, Mark Todd, Birdie Blunt. Now, what can the man achieve on this horse? Gone well with Justin Ace. He's on 53.8, he's on our leaderboard in about fourth place at the moment. But this could go higher. The horse full of scope. He was well placed here two years ago with Nick Burton when he got on the British squad. Erica Watson, still clear with last of the Incas. And good on the clock, ooh, drops a knee there, but she sits tight, got to pick up the reins and set sail for the last third. Well, this horse was a former hurdle by Sunny Boy. You can see his long, raking stride as Toddy turns for the second Luckington crossing. I wonder whether he'll go straight, having seen a couple jump it. No. 
And of course, there have been several horses inside the time, despite going the long way here. And Todd would know with the speed that this horse has that he really doesn't need to take the risk. Well, Bruce Davidson is certainly into the last third of the course, and he is right on target. Remember, 46.6. He can't go into the lead, but if he goes inside the time, 12 minutes 14, and looks a bit lucky there, but he's all right, he'll go into third place with all to play for for tomorrow's jumping. Ears pricked, Ferdy Blunt. Well, a big jump into the water there. And Mark looks down, what's happening? Looks down again, and he's got problems. Yes, he's lost his iron. Now, he's only a third of the way around. I wonder how he's going to play this. Well, despite only having one iron, he sees a good stride to the V. Now, he'll be just going through his mind, wanting to know how he can give the horse a good ride in that inconvenience. No inconvenience for Bruce Davidson. He's set for home. He's going inside the time. He'll go into third, which means he's really going to put the pressure on William Fox Pitt and Matt Ryan for Australia. Could this be the year for Bruce Davidson? 1974 was his first attempt. So Tina Gifford setting out on her second ride, knowing that she really did a superb job on her first horse, Midnight Blue. And that gives you the sort of confidence, although this is more experienced. Now, this is a crucial moment. Remember, only one iron. Balance here, absolutely imperative. Oh! Doesn't find it easy. That would have hurt. Todd. Up goes his leg. He suddenly realised that's the way to give the horse the easiest possible ride with only one iron. Horse and rider looking very comfortable, very easy here. Very deceptive, this horse and rider. They really do, when the pressure's on, come to their very best make it look easy they never look flustered all mark of class i feel well erica watson wouldn't have uh, the best of records here at badminton but this certainly would be her best performance if she can get home as andrew nicholson sets out remember he didn't get round on spinning rhombus but this the horse that he rode in the games jagermaster Now, the water, one iron. What is this magic band going to do here? Sits tight despite. Ah, oh, this is quite unbelievable. This is definitely a piece of badminton history. Halfway, he's good on the clock. We've seen it at Aintree. Are we going to see it at badminton now? Just one iron for Mark Todd. Well, Tina Gifford with two irons, and she'll think she'll need it because this is a difficult fence. It's ridden well. And I must say, General Jock makes it look easy too. Mark Todd, he's quarter of a mile from home. He's still got the one hour, rather slips one way then. But that will be absolutely agony for Mark Todd. The muscles will be aching, even with the great ride up himself. And amazingly enough, still clear. And I think he's going to go inside the time. He's got uh, more than a minute to get inside. Up goes the leg again. Oh, and a chance to look at the clock as well. Can you believe it? Well, Matt Harum Scarum, it may be for Mark Todd, but this combination looking very cool, calm, and absolutely collected. As good as anyone up those staircase. Mark Todd of the last. He is going to go inside the time. And Mark Todd, of course, has made history before. Last year it was in style. This year it's in style with one iron. And there is his family, Carl, and his wife there to recognise one of the finest pieces of cross-country riding we'll ever see here. Very difficult to give a good ride with just the one iron, but certainly Todd has done it. Well, Mary's got a difficult task with King William. They, of course, won it here, the Mitsubishi title itself, in 1992. But she knows she can't win it on this horse again. She's down the field after a disappointing dressage. Nicholson known for his stick ability. Oh, and that's why! Oh, can you believe it? You don't see better recoveries than that. He hit the first very hard. He came in very quickly. The horse hit it hard, and most other people would have been gone, but not Andrew Nicholson. 20 penalties, and that's all.
with Robert Howell in his own well, first Tina's run. given us one piece of classical riding and she's giving us another. This girl has arrived in the very, very top flight. The mare on this horse's side, out of the great Spartan general, and it certainly looks like it, giving us the real class, because this horse is fast. There's a lovely picture of concentration. Mary absolutely concentrating, and King William thoroughly enjoying. He loves this cross country. Copes with those two big corners, and they are big corners, believe me. They copes them so easily. Tina Giffords into the home straight. Two fences left over the little sheep feeder. And now just to take a look at the clock, and he's very fast indeed. Coming to the second Luckington crossing, King and William, and Mary's not going to score any records by going straight. She wants to put a good performance behind her. Remember, of course, European Championships in Petoni, and, of course, the Olympic Games. Well, this Jagermeister, very good horse, a young horse still, and, of course, one in the hands of Andrew Nicholson, a lot to be expected, but uh, he fell in the hay. Lucky not to fall here but still good for New Zealand, I think, for the future. King William showing just how light he is on his feet through there. Well, now the lake. I must say, a great credit to Mary. This horse looking fitter than we've ever seen him look. It certainly caused him problems in the dressage. Mary drops her reins again, rather than she did on King Kong. In fact, nearly has the same problem, but there I think experience showed, whereas King Kong came to a halt, King William said, now, I know where to go, come on. What a lovely picture near the end of the day. Andrew Nicholson in full flight. Tremendous man across the country. And King William yet again giving an impressive performance. One wonders what he's going to do in the show jumping. He does look more relaxed than he used to. He is, of course, now just those few years older. He still could be a very good prospect for Great Britain, both this year and next. Because he has to be one of the best horses in the world across the country. And Mary's talents, they do speak for themselves these days. He looks to be on target. Well, we're looking down the final stages of this course, King William, one of the last to come home, a great day sport. And it looks as if uh, Mary could well be the ninth to go inside the time on King William on a dressage of 54.8, and that'll certainly bring her into the uh, top ten. But, of course, show jumping to come, and that is William's Achilles heel. But we all hope that he's uh, got better at that little part of it. King William coming towards the end, the coolest part of the day, the crowd have stayed, as well they should have done, because this last hour's entertainment has been something quite extraordinary. And that's the scene as Mary comes home. She is going to go inside the time. She is, in fact, the fastest of the day. She's well under 12 minutes. And as you can see for yourselves, King William does it easily. A check on the watch, and it tells Mary exactly that she is the fastest of the day. She finishes on her dressage. Not going to be a winning day, but certainly still one that is uh, worthy of her talents. And a large crowd applauding Mary Thompson as she completes a marvellous day's sport. But William Fox Pitt does hang on, but of course less than a fence. Eagle Lion, Bruce Davidson, that's the real jumping machine. Quite close enough with that show jumping to come. Ian Stark, good to see him back for Great Britain. And of course, Mark Todd, he's there to add pressure as well. In fact, in the top ten, Tina Gifford with two to just underline her tremendous performance. And spot Bico 2 for America, that could well improve if the show jumping come tomorrow. And of course, there's also a second Mark Todd and Mary Thompson. Well, a gorgeous morning, but a very tense atmosphere for the final horse inspection. That's the occasion when the ground jury take a look to see whether the horses are fit, sound and able for the final show jumping phase. 
always the most nerve-wracking of occasions for the riders and those involved. Number 88, Charka, ridden by William Fox Pitt. On the whole, the horses have come out very well indeed, despite the heat and the hard ground of the day before. But this is Charka, the leader. picture tells the story that he's not too level after yesterday's exertions and now the grand jury headed by the president Judy Bradwell and Frederick Obell from Denmark and Brian Ross from United States of America they judge the dressage and it's now their decision of who gets through and who doesn't I'm afraid that the Charka has not passed Well, that wasn't the only piece of dramatic news from that final horse inspection because Bertie Blunt and Mark Todd, after their brilliant round the day before, they too failed to pass the horse inspection, and so our leaderboard was changed quite dramatically. In fact, in this final phase, the show jumping phase, Mary Christine Drouard, the first we see, moved up two places. She was 12th overnight, and now as a result of the horse inspection, she stands 10th at the moment. The show jumping phase to test that the horse is still fit, able, supple and balanced after the tremendous endurance test yesterday. And this lovely nine-year-old summer song, really a superb example of what modern three-day show jumping is all about. The course is quite twisty, just as is normal for this phase. And there have not been many clear rounds, and indeed time has been quite tight. So we really could get a very, very close finish. This nine-year-old summer song, back in a lovely rhythm, and you might remember from the cross-country pictures, was hard pulling, but Mary Christine settled the horse down now showing lovely balance and of course the horse giving a lovely arc over his fences jumping very clean and believe me that is not easy to achieve on the third day this horse gave a most impressive performance in the show jumping in the Hague it really is perhaps one of the Achilles hills of British three-day eventing well, she's going to be very close to the time allowed, but it has been a copybook round. This is quite short in here. Jumps it very well. Absolute copybook round. Just what it's all about. But half a time fault added on. 59.9, and she could go up. Well, now, Philip Dutton, True Blue Girdwood. He's a very, very spooky horse, this. One wonders how he will react to what is a very tense occasion, an enormous crowd enjoying not only the action but the glorious sunshine as well. Rather typical Australian horse this, quite small, tough, wiry, very fast. But one of the great attributes of any international sportsman is to have the temperament to bring out the best when it really matters. And that is what Philip Dutton has got. Well, horse and rider coping absolutely brilliantly in their first badminton. And indeed, a clear round with just a quarter of a time fault means they finish on 56.45. And they're set to go up the leaderboard as we get towards the last few in the show jumping. So, coming in, in eighth place, all British fingers and toes firmly crossed King William and Mary Thompson. Has never found this easy, and when he gets tense, he starts to jump left-handed. He's already had one down. And the crowd tell you there he's had a second down. 
but he does look so much more relaxed than he has done in the past. Lars Cederholm has been working very closely with Mary. Mary, who herself is very talented in the show jumping, but everyone who's worked with King William has found him so difficult, but he definitely is getting better with age. But already he's dropped down two places, and if he has any more, he drops down a lot more places. And this final combination that we'll see in a moment or two is where he really will be tested. Just see for yourself, compared to the French horse Summer Song, how he really got into the air and was careful. This horse tends to jump so flat and rather dive at his fences. That's what makes it difficult. Now the combination. That's gone. And that. Four down. King William looked better, but still has to have 20 penalties and time faults to add. 76.05 down into 14th place. Well, now the man who can make this show jumping really count. Of course, he has jumped in the Olympic discipline of show jumping, has a superb eye, brilliant natural rhythm and balance. Now with Justin Ace, so frustrated and disappointed that uh, his other has Bertie Blunt didn't come down. But I might add, good to see Mark looking uh, pretty fit himself after that ride yesterday on Bertie Blunt. Justin Ace in seventh place on a score of 53.8. So a clear round then puts the pressure on those above him. And of course that includes two Britons, Tina Gifford and Ian Stark. Justin Ace looked just a little tired as he came towards the end of the course, and of course he did hit the cross question very hard near the end of the course, but he looks a picture of health this morning. Combination. And Toddy makes that show jumping count. Again, brilliant exhibition. Karen O'Connor, United States of America. Mark Todd with that clear round, 53.8. So Karen has got to jump clear to maintain, at the moment, fifth place. But Captain Mark Phillips, who's now taken on the management of the top American riders, has really got a confidence going and is developing their skills. And this is one that is surely developing from that confidence and, and skills from Mark. One of the ten horses inside the time across country. So she went fast yesterday, but the horse now back, collected, and jumping very cleanly. And interestingly enough, as we've got to the more experienced riders, they're going much closer to the time. This is going to be well inside the time allowed. And is a clear round. Nothing to add to their score overnight. 51 is their score. And I think they could jump well up. Nerve-wracking occasion, this, for Tina Gifford. It is perhaps one of her weaker links. She's improving all of the time. She, too, has worked under the talents of Lars Cederholm. And, incidentally, she has already jumped her first horse, uh, Midnight Blue. Remember, she had two in the top ten, so they gave permission, the grand jury, to Tina Gifford to jump out of order with Midnight Blue. And she had a good run, but had one fence down. And uh, that, at the moment, means she, on Midnight Blue, is in, se in eighth place.
Well, Tina, of course, got a tremendous background. Very successful junior and young rider. Her father, the very tops in national hunt trainers. Her mum was one of Britain's top show jumpers, indeed one of the world's top show jumpers for several seasons. And that, I think, has gone. A rather casual pole, and I think it is gone. It's all so close that uh, it won't drop her down too many, but another would. And of course, what it does mean, and she was in touch with it, is she could have won, but that I'm afraid now may, well, in fact, it has thrown it out of the window. Because Mark Todd's got in front of her and Biko. But the combination looking a lot more confident, getting a good rhythm. One or two rattles, though. The crowd absolutely hushed. And jumps the last combination very well, but that last, that pole did fall. So it is five penalties. She's inside the time, 55.2. She's still going to be well in the frame, but she's not going to win it. Well, that'll just be a little frustration for Tina, and I think she shows it on her face. She'll be a little bit disappointed because she certainly was within sight of her first badminton title. But I think in the years to come, that will happen. Now the other British hope, Ian Stark with Calibre. The horse that doesn't naturally jump in the style to make it easy for Ian on the final day. Owned jointly by the Stories up in Roxburghshire and Super Solvitax. And in fact, the Stories' great point of pointers. They would have been thrilled with Ian's performance yesterday, but they will be truly biting their nails now because this is the most difficult phase for Ian. And you'll see for yourself just in the way, the style, in fact, of the horse, why it is difficult for Ian. Jumps very flat back, head in the air, not that lovely round arc. Ah. So, Britain's not going to win the title. So now Ian's plan will be try to restrict the damage as much as he can. He's down two or three places already. And he's still got quite a long way to go. Another five. So disappointing when you get close to a major title to see it disappearing away. But that's what's happening at the moment. He's a nine-year-old horse that isn't clean-bred. He went uh, well at Burley last year. In fact, he was 11th there last year. So I would think the British electors would be very pleased for Ian to have a horse that's of international standard. And certainly he proved that yesterday. Now, that final combination. This is where the former European champion is going to be at his best. Ah, there's another five. 15, but he's all right on time. 65.2, his final score. And he's going to go down into 10th place. So from third to 10th for Ian Stark, proving again how costly show jumping can be, because not only is he lost places, but of course he's given more breathing space to the two above him. And here's the man who could have benefited. Bruce Davidson, United States of America, Eagle Lion. And as we've said on several occasions during this Mitsubishi Badminton, this horse is a real jumper. And of course, when you've got the sort of experience that this man has, put the two together and they could be worthy of this famous title here.
1974 was his first attempt. And uh, that was on the great Irish imp that he went on to win the World Championship that year. But he actually felt that he was uh, rather cheated that year because the uh, optimum time uh, was, in fact, declared a little different. He's always felt that uh, he was a little bit cheated. And he's, as a result, been trying to win this one harder than he's tried to win any title. Just remember, this sport is about all-round ability, all-round ability of the horse and all-round ability of the rider. This man, he race rides, he events, he dressage, he show jumps, he's certainly the all-round rider. Has he got the horse that's going to win the title for him? to say that you wouldn't have thought he'd done a lot of work yesterday. He looks as fresh as paint. Very noticeable too that he keeps up a very good pace, cuts corners where he can, so he's got half an eye on the clock because he it's possible to lose the title through time faults as well. He's all right on the clock. Well, I don't know whether Bruce Davidson felt the pressure, but Eagle Lion certainly didn't. Classic round. Now, that puts the pressure on the leader. 46.60, the score for Eagle Lion and Bruce Davidson means Matt Ryan has got a jump clear. And that's smart from Bruce Davidson. You don't get them too easily, I think does explain everything. Captain Mark Phillips just shaking by the hand. Done in style. And I think Matt Ryan has just a moment to say, well done, Bruce. He's a pretty relaxed cookie, the Australian. But will history repeat itself? 1992, Matt Ryan came out of really nowhere to lead after the cross country on this very horse then had five show jumps down to go right back down the leaderboard. And of course, that year he went on to win the Olympic gold medal when he really did put in a superb performance in the final show jumping to clinch that gold. But now he's got a second chance. You don't often get two chances to win this Bamford's title. But I think you'd have to say the odds are on Bruce Davidson. The show jumping is the weakest phase. He's a good jumper, but he just isn't always the cleanest of jumpers. Quite interesting that uh, in the Olympic Games, when everyone wondered whether he was going to have a fence down there, uh, Vicky Roycroft and her husband Wayne were the two that helped Matt. Wayne Roycroft is here, not Vicky. And have they got this horse and rider in gear to jump the clear that they want? Ah, it's all over. You can see for yourself, he just did not jump high enough at that gate. It is, of course, small by show jumping standards, but when you're show jumping after cross country, it's very often quite big enough. So he's had one down, drops him one place at the moment. Bruce Davidson is the winner. Now the Australian is trying to hang on for second. 1992, he disappeared a long way down. You want to forget that. Matt, who so, like so many of the international riders now, campaigns from England.
comes in very tight. And like once again, the last combination could be the one that he really has to concentrate on. Rattles the first. Jumps the last two, it's second place for the Olympic champion, Matt Ryan. And there's the man who takes the pot of gold, 22 and a half thousand pounds the richer, Bruce Davidson from the United States of America. 21 years after he first tried, he takes the trophy ahead of Matt Ryan. But there, this year, it's United States of America who takes pride of place for the fine performance from Karen O'Connor. But look at the lineup. Tina Gifford in the top five, Mark Todd there too. And indeed, in the top 10, there are six different nations. Ian Stark finishing in 10th place to give Britain three out of the top 10 places. Note the name Philip Dutton and note the name too of the French horse Summer Song. So 21 years since he first tried and over that period of time he's won two world titles. But this will be the occasion that he remembers more than any other. The moment he steps forward to receive the Mitsubishi Motors Trophy.